Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Soulful Spinning. This is my channel where I share my creative endeavors with fiber. Here at the house you'll find me uh, spinning, knitting, washing wool, uh, weaving, uh, a bit of sewing, a touch of crochet, all the fiber related crafts, handcrafts. Today is the 12th of May and it's a beautiful Friday afternoon here in the Chicagoland area where I'm recording. Yesterday we had a bright, sunny, beautiful day. I was outside um, working on my weaving project. Last week I talked about a new loom that I received and it's a 12 inch Ashford Knitter's Loom. So I'm gonna, uh, this episode's gonna be heavy on the weaving. Uh, I wanna share uh, my experiences with the two rigid heddles that I have. I have a shocked uh, flip loom, 25 inch, and I have this now this 12 inch Ashford Knitter's Loom. So I thought I would share resources that I'm using to help me with my weaving. I've got a couple of books to review and I've got some YouTube channels that I want to recommend. A few of them are more tutorial in nature and uh, some of them are more just inspirational in it, when it comes to weaving. So yes, I'm all cleaned up. I have my cup of tea. Uh, Peaches and I were outside today. Uh, my husband and I went to the Home Depot the other day and bought some flowers so I had to get my marigolds planted. So we were out there today. Uh, it's a little overcast today but uh, kind of a nice change after a bright sunny day. It's nice to have a little bit of a cloudy rainy day I think. If you're a new viewer thank you so much for checking me out and if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for continuing to come back and listen to what I'm up to here at the house with my knitting and spinning etc. So I think I'm going to start with uh, the weaving. Last week I showed this um, uh, shawl that I took off my shock loom and I thought I would have it you know, finished this week but I, uh, I'm not quite there yet. I have finished uh, one end of the fringe. Uh, so what I'm doing, oops that's not the finished side, this is the finished side. I'm taking my tie-offs, taking them in groups of, I think I did them in groups of four, and then I'm using my fringe twister tool to make these little braids. It's much more time consuming than I, uh, you might think at, at first glance. So it takes quite a bit of time. Uh, once, I, once I get that done, I'm gonna go ahead and wash it in some warm water and, um, get all the dust out first of all and then trim off the tails here. So I'm laying the the fabric on the table and then I'm using a heavy book. I'm using this. <laughs> this is my son's Lego book from years ago. <laughs> There's Legos in there. Lego books. Uh, standing, standing small. <laughs> and I just using this as a weight uh, to hold the, the work. Uh, I've started this side already uh, with the braids here. So it just creates a nice, nice little, nice little effect. So you could, I don't know, if you look very, very closely, you can see on my weaving, sorry, that that last, that first weft thread started to come undone when I took it off the loom. It wasn't secured with a hem stitch. So yeah, so that's something to, something to keep in mind when you're weaving. So yeah, so all you do is you take uh, groups of two, and then you take your winder. Uh, this has enough for three. You just do the just two of them. I clip the ends. And then I've been going um, counter clockwise. Clockwise is S. Yes, clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Nice prime number. Uh, sometimes I lose a little bit of the twist when I take them off the the little hooks. So keeping the ends here, 
keeping the ends, now I tie my knot. And, and then it just, uh, like magic, uh, makes this nice little braid. Yeah. So let me see if I can get you in closer. I don't have the best light today. Actually, it's nice to film on a cloudy day because you have more diffuse light and less changes in the light as you're working. So cloudy days are also nice to take pictures outside. So I'm just going to take these two. And uh, do my twisting. Do about 17. And then tie the knot. And uh, they're all about, uh, I had trimmed off the, the Sorry, you don't need to be that close to me. <laughs> I had, uh, when I took it off the loom, I used my rotary cutter for my quilting days, and I cut the fringe to be about six inches from the end, and then I'm doing the fringe twisting, and so when I do the twisting and I make the knot, they're all turning about the same length. They're turning out to be the same length. Um, some of them are a little longer than others, but you know that's the nature of a handmade, a handcrafted uh, item. So yeah, you could see. Do I look at myself here? It uh, it does take a, a, f a fair amount of time to do each little twisty. Um, so I've been listening to. Uh, let's see, oh, there, that's better. I have. Uh, you don't need to be that close to me. <laughs> I've been listening to Stephen Fry's. Uh, the study in Scarlet, he, he has narrated the Sherlock Holmes stories, which I'm a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. I think when I was 15 or 16, I got a volume for, my, for a Christmas present from my mother in the 70s. And uh, we're huge fans of the Jeremy Brett versions of Sherlock. And I think I was listening to, I, I've been mentioning Kate, the last Homely House for the last three videos, but she was saying that Stephen Fry also narrates the Lord of the Rings trilogy, I think. So I went ahead and got a trial of Audible, and I'm listening to Stephen Fry read the Sherlock Holmes stories, and uh, it's pretty delightful, actually. So listening to an audiobook and uh, making my fringe and just having the time of my life here, I'm retired, and I'm just so happy that every day I get to do stuff that I enjoy doing. So yeah, as I'm looking at this today, I was examining this, I was seeing some of my mistakes um, at the beginning of the weaving, I'm, uh, I kind of skipped some some of the warp threads. The warp threads are the threads that go up and down, and then the weft goes side to side. Uh, I've gotten much better at making sure that my shuttle goes right through the shed and doesn't pick up any of the warp by accident. But yeah, I talked about this last week. This is uh, the two yarns I used were a baby alpaca for the weft, which is the side to side, and I used Barocco Sesame for the warp. So, yeah, so I'm gonna finish, well, I'm gonna work on, I'm gonna work on the, um, the fringe. <laughs> Is there any room at the inn? <laughs> um, I'm getting silly. Uh, I will f uh, work on the other end and hopefully hopefully get it in the wash and get it all dried and so next week I can show it off and I'd like to, to see how how the fabric changes as a result of washing. So I've got that. I'm almost, well, it's a work in progress. Charlie's over there keeping me company and my Mother's Day roses are over there. So happy Mother's Day. To, this is Mother's Day weekend, so this Sunday um, is Mother's Day in the States with the 14th of May. 
So that's our traditional day for uh, my husband and I plant a bunch of seeds on Mother's Day for all of our wildflowers. And hopefully the weather will cooperate and we'll be able to do that. All right, so let's talk about weaving just a little bit. So I bought a shot flip bloom some time ago. It's a 25 inch uh, flip bloom. I bought it from Bountiful Spin and Weave. Uh, the beautiful lady there is very lovely. Um, Lois helped me out over the phone. And I was debating whether to get the 25 inch or the 30 inch. And she was saying that with the rigid heddle, if you have a very a wide width, the weaving can be a little cumbersome and you need a lot of room side to side to do your weaving. Though I think a 30 inch would be, which would be quite nice. Uh, I know a lot of people use those Ashford 30 inch looms and those are very versatile. But I think if you get a loom that's 25 or bigger, a, a stand is really, really helpful. And that's what I have with my shot flip. And it's great because it literally, um, it, it, it flips up and uh, I'm gonna actually, after I'm done talking here, I'm gonna show you the loom up close. Uh, it's really a well-made loom. It's made out of maple. It has a real good tension. The uh, ratchet and pawls are on both sides of the back beam. So it really holds a nice tight warp and I like it a lot. Um, I just was feeling like I wanted to have another loom that I could sample on and that would be a little bit more portable, hence the Ashford Knitters loom, the 12 inch loom. And I have it here. I'll show you what I'm working on here. So I forgot how to warp because it had been some time before I warped. And on top of that, I was trying a, a hybrid warping with a, a warping, what do you call that? A warping board. Well, that was not going so well, so I went ahead with just the regular direct warping with the peg. And I was able to get the warp uh, all tied up on my loom. And it was great. Yesterday, I took the loom outside and I was able to do some weaving in the garden, which is exactly what I wanted. So, um, yeah, this, this loom is really, uh, it's very lightweight. It came finished. Uh, you don't have to put anything together, uh, which I appreciate. I, I, that's one thing where I have, when I have to put something together, it's always a big deal. So the fact that this came all finished and really just ready to warp was, uh, was a bonus. It comes with a beautiful carrying bag. I'll show you the carrying bag here. So it comes with this carrying bag, and everything you needed was inside. Uh, I got an extra heddle. I got um, 12 inch. I, I think I got a 10. Yeah, I got a 10 dent heddle. It came with warping, you know, warping sticks, uh, warping peg, everything you're going to need, and uh, very nice instructions too. So Ashford's got uh, some videos on YouTube to show you how to warp the loom. But I have some other resources that I thought were really helpful for me, and I thought I would share those with you today. So yeah, so what I'm doing is I just, I took some yarn that I didn't care about. It was in my stash. It's Superwash Cascade 220. Uh, it's, I think I bought it because I was going to make some stuffies, some little stuffed animals, and then I never got around to it. And one of them is a sort of a variegated, uh, they call it paint. It's got different colors, pastel colors. And then uh, I had another ball of these, this lemon yellow that I'm using for the weft. Now I did run out because, silly me, I warped the whole loom, the whole 12 inches, with only one ball of yarn, and I ran out. So I had to warp a little bit of the loom with the yellow. But really, it's looking fine because the majority of the yarn is basically yellow. I'll get you up close here in just a little while. I'll show you how I'm weaving on this. But you can see the colors here. So I, I think that uh, everybody gets their own sort of way or little, little tips and things that they find is useful when they're warping their loom. Uh, I was watching Amy, I think her name is Amy Knight. She has the video on the hybrid warping where you use the warping board. But what 
I didn't use, I wasn't successful at using that method just yet, but I, I did use something that she, she did at hers. And that is after I had finished uh, warping the loom before I uh, rolled it on the back beam, I took a bunch of ties and I just tied the warp half a dozen places. And then when I took it off the peg, I did a chain, like a finger chain. And then I was able to take the loom outside and then slowly wind it on the back beam while I take off the ties. So that was really, uh, it was a lot easy. It was, it was something I could do by myself. And uh, a lot of times with weaving, they say, well, get a friend, you know, to hold the warp while you're winding it on. Well, not everybody has anybody uh, nearby. So totally doable. You don't need another person to warp. I've warped how many projects? I think I've done four projects so far. So I'm a baby weaver, um, but I have the bug. I think weaving is an enchantment. What did somebody say? Liz Gibson, I think, in her book said that weaving is an enchantress. And once it has you under her spell, you, and she doesn't let you go. So, yeah, so I'm working on that. Uh, and this morning I just did a hem stitch. One thing I've uh, decided is I'm never going to do a rigid heddle weaving without doing a hem stitch. So what a hem stitch does is it prevents your weft threads, which are your horizontal threads, from coming unwoven uh, when you take it off the loom. Uh, with my brown shawl, I, I tied off the warp threads, but I could see that that last uh, weft was starting to loosen up. So the hem stitch actually is really pretty straightforward. It reminds me of a embroidery stitch, like a um, blanket stitch that you use to uh, applique things on surfaces. So I hem stitched this morning and I used a tutorial by the Violet Unicorn, which is one of the YouTubers that I wanted to mention. So yes, let's talk about some of, some of my resources that I found on YouTube that I thought might be helpful. And I will link uh, their channels in the description and everything I talk about today will be linked in the description. So for weaving for tutorials, uh, the Violet Unicorn, uh, that, the lady on there is very, she's very calm and she explains things very methodically and step by step and really walks you through the warping process and the hem stitch process, which I really appreciate. Uh, the Violet Unicorn. And then there's a big, big channel, uh, Kelly Casanova on YouTube, who does all kinds of weaving. And I think she has an online weaving school as well. Then uh, there's Mylena Curly and Yarny, and she's delightful. She has lots of really great videos on warping. She's got her own special way of warping, of doing the hem stitch, and she's got good close-up views of everything she's doing. I really like her channel. I'm watching one now about clasped weaving, which I didn't know what that was. So she's really great. And then uh, another channel called Vermont Weaving Supplies. That was a channel that I found that uh, the teacher there showed you how to use the hybrid method. Well, there's different ways to use the warping board to, to warp your rigid heddle, but if, if you go to um, Vermont Weaving Spice, she, she bas it's basically the direct method, but just using the warping board. If you're interested in your original heddle weaver, uh, you can go ahead and check those out. So those are the videos that I, or the YouTube channels that I really uh, feel are more tutorial in nature. And then of course, there's lots of uh, podcasters that weave that are very inspirational and um, there's many, many, and, but I wanted to mention just a few that I really enjoy. Uh, one of them is Ivana from the Republic of Me. Uh, Ivana, she, oh, she makes these woven pieces out of all of her hand spun. Uh, she uses commercial yarn for the warp, and then she uses her hand spun for the weft, and she makes these beautiful big shawls and blankets. I think she has a 48-inch Ashford which I don't know how she does it because she's, she's tiny, uh, four, four feet, but she, and she also has, I think, the 30. Her weaving is amazing, so uh, definitely check her out if you're interested in weaving. There's uh, Amy from Pin and Ply. 
Amy is a fiber artist full time now. She sells her hand spun and hand woven pieces. She makes rugs and pillows and she really is into rustic wools and natural fibers and she has these beautiful uh, like boucle style that she did on her rigid heddle. I really love listening to her. And then Leah, Wild Creative, I follow her on YouTube. Her and her daughter are fiber artists and very inspirational channel. Leah uh, spins the most beautiful art yarn and makes these woven pieces that are just amazing. I believe she has an Etsy shop where she sells and she also shows her pieces in galleries and things like that. So those are, you know, half a dozen or so channels that I've, I find helpful. If you have somebody that you really like on YouTube with weaving, either inspirational or tutorial in nature, I'd really appreciate it if you would link in the comments below or give me a heads up and I'd love to check them out, give them a shout out uh, next time I have a video. All right, let's talk about books. I have two books from my bookshelf this week that have to do with rigid heddle weaving, and they're both very, very good. One of them is more geared towards beginners, and the other one is geared to somebody who already is comfortable warping the loom and, and talks about all these different things you can do with a rigid heddle. So I'll talk about this one first. So the first one is this Weaving Made Easy by Liz Gibson. Uh, she's a yarn worker online. She also has an online school and she has some free videos on YouTube as well. 17 projects using a rigid heddle loom. This easy and accessible guide to weaving uses the simple rigid heddle loom to create fabrics that are a perfect blend of fun and functionality. The rigid heddle loom is small, portable, and affordable, making it the perfect starting point for anyone wanting to learn to weave. The 17 quick and easy projects in Weaving Made Easy show how to make fabrics that are soft and drapey, sturdy and practical, or just plain fun and funky. So this one is getting well thumbed because uh, I've been referring to it quite a bit. I'll show you the table of contents. So, so she's got a huge section on warping and weaving. So the first 24 pages is all about uh, the parts of the loom and, and how to how to weave with really nice detailed pictures. Oh yes, she's the one that said, weaving is an enchantress. I'm not exactly sure how I came under her spell, but uh, she says that weaving for me is a small act of rebellion. We are so far removed from how the items we depend on every day, food, clothing, and shelter are made. Now I'm not even close to making everything I wear or all the textiles in my home, but at least I know what it takes to make the fabric that I depend on. So, uh, most of these projects in the book you can make on a small rigid heddle. A lot of them, like a 12 inch rigid, rigid heddle would be perfect. I mean, really warping and weaving. Let's see. Let me see. Most of you, let me see. Weaving, let's see. I'm going to show you how much part of it is. Okay. So, so this part of the book, this first section here, is all on warping and weaving. She has things in here about how to correct mistakes, how to change colors, uh, how to fix a broken warp thread, you know, anything and everything you'd want to know about basic weaving, she has in here. And then she has some beautiful projects. Um, she's got a scarf, a couple of scarves in here, of course. Scarves are always fun to make. Uh, she has uh, placemats. and towels. She has a pair of slippers in here. Here's a plaid. So in here she teaches you how to change the colors in your weaving. Uh, this is the one that I had made, uh, but different colors. Uh, it's put away with the winter things. I don't have it handy, but 
each of the projects showcases a different technique. This one here is about uh, t creating a tweed fabric. And what she has you do is thread each slot in each hole with three strands of yarn. And so you get this myriad of colors intermingling in your woven project. Uh, she has a bag, grab and go bag. So that would be an introduction to sewing with your fabric. And look, I didn't know you could do the hound's tooth uh, pattern on the rigid heddle, but you can. It's basically just color. You can do a lot with color, color and weaving. Uh, so here's another bag that she has in here. This one I think uses more of a weft facing fabric, so a little bit of kind of an introduction to almost tapestry. Yes, she um, explains how to change colors halfway through. Uh, there's a belt in here, there's uh, napkins, there's a rug. Just amazing, really. I think you just work through, here's a belt. And she has a pillow in here as well. Uh, Pickup sticks, lino, uh, doing a lino lace, which basically you twist Use a pickup stick. So a pickup stick it, it picks up some of the threads, basically creating another, almost like another heddle. So lino lace is a technique using the pickup stick. Uh, how to do bouquets, which sort of bringing the uh, loops forward. So she really walks you through very, very easy to oh, slightly more complex. But all of the projects in here are very accessible and doable for a uh, a new weaver. So Liz Gibson, uh, the yarn worker. And this is the revised and updated edition. Highly recommend that book. And the other book is the Weaver's Idea book, Creative Cloth on a Rigid Heddle. This, if that book's your springboard for us weaving on the Rigid Heddle, this really would give you enough projects for a lifetime. There's just so many things that she talks about in this book. Uh, one thing I really appreciate is that it's spiral bound, so it stays open quite nicely. Uh, this book assumes that you already know how to warp. And this lady is married to Barry Schacht, or Schacht. I took German in high school, so Schacht would I think be the correct pronunciation of that, so that's why I say shocked. But anyway, she's Barry's wife, which I thought was really interesting. I think the, the weaving and spinning world is much smaller than I think. I don't know. Like I found out that Paula Simmons, who wrote that Spin Softly book, was married to Patrick Green. So, you know, these fiber power couples, I guess. So uh, in chapter one, she talks about, uh, I'll give, again, I'll show you the table of contents. Here you go. It's, it's very, very extensive, I would say. Chapter one is designing with plain weave. Okay, let me tell you what she says about the layout of the book. Chapter one is sim uh, simple structures. Uh, chapter two is finger controlled weaves, which involve manipulating threads by hand. In chapter three, she explores the vast possibilities of the pickup stick, including many pattern recipes and ideas. In chapter four, she looks at warp and weft faced fabrics. In chapter five, she explains two heddle weaving and includes how to warp and weave with two heddles, including weaving double weave double weave. So I guess you can, there's a way to weave twice the width of your loom. I don't, I think that would be really cool with my 25 inch. You could make a huge blanket. Uh, I just wanted to show you this page here. This is in the plain weave chapter and these are a lot, a lot of the different patterns you could create just by designing with your warp and your weft. And she explains that. So wouldn't that be fun? I'm going to get two colors and do some sampling. 
after I finish this project here. Like this, this fabric here, I've seen this fabric before, and I thought that you needed to use a shaft loom for that, and you don't, you don't. So it's just basically the number of darks and lights in the warp and the weft. So really cool. Uh, so then she's got uh, finger, finger controlled weaves, add a highlight accent or special border. And it's just uh, making loops, it's just doing textures. Look at here. Do textures. Danish medallions. Beads, adding beads to your weaving. I mean, just a load, a load of things. And double weaving. I don't even, can't even imagine double weaving. Yeah, weaving with two heddles. And of course the book is is filled with beautiful photographs of the projects. So this book is by Jane Patrick. Uh, the Weaver's Idea book, Creative Cloth on a Rigid Huddle Loom. So I think these two books will keep me busy for quite a while. Um, this, one, uh, this one, I think I'm gonna work from this one quite a bit and then try some techniques uh, from this one. So yeah, super excited about that. All right, what else was I going to talk about? I finished a couple of uh, little skeins of yarn this week. And they're quite different. They're made from the same prep. Some weeks ago, I made some pulled top, comb top off of my hackle, and I made two different yarns. So this yarn here is just a traditional two-ply uh, spun in a a worsted style on my drop spindle, one of my drop spindles. And then I went crazy and I made this. <laughs> I don't don't ask me what I'm gonna do with it. I, I have no idea. Well I do have an idea. I think I'm gonna try to put this in a wo woven project. But look at this crazy it's it's not been finished. I didn't steam it, uh, so it's got a little bit of a twist uh, to it. But I did a thick and thin yarn, and then I plied it with some metallic thread that I got at uh, Joann's. It's just a, uh, I think it's a silver metallic thread. It's 50 meters because I had 50 meters of the thread, and it was just enough to finish the project. So it's got these uh, kind of like beehives here. Uh, it's pretty thin otherwise with these little. So yeah, so any, anyway, um, the thing about this kind of yarn is you always wonder, well, what am I going to do with it? Uh, it is very fun to make. But I'm, I've been inspired by Leah, uh, the, the crea Wild Creative on YouTube. She uses, she'll show these, this table of beautiful art yarn, thick and thin, and coils, and then she puts them in a weaving, sort of Sayori style. Uh, Sayori weaving is a Japanese tradition of, uh, they have special looms, but they're basically two shaft looms, and they use texture and sort of a wabi-sabi uh, uh, approach to weaving, uh, using different uh, thicknesses, uh, uh, having like locks come out of your woven project, that kind of thing. So that's what she does. And I thought, wouldn't this be fun? I think I'm going to collect all my art yarn. I made art yarn a few years ago. I kind of went crazy and I made a bunch of art yarn. And uh, many, many of the comments were, yeah, I make that too, but then I don't know what to do with it. So what are you going to do with it? And uh, so most of it's just been sitting in my stash. But now that I have my little loom here, I'm going to... No, maybe I should just... 
Should I weave this into this? Should I? I think I'm going to try it. I am. I'm going to put this on here. I just was looking at the colors. <laughs> um, it's just a practice piece anyway. So yeah, oh yeah, I'm going to try that. Maybe I'll use this too. Because I didn't, I don't think, uh, I don't have, I only have this much on my shuttle and this much yellow left over. So maybe I'll intersperse it with this yarn. I just got that idea. I'm going to do that. Exciting. I'm going to do that after I'm done here. So I wanted to show you how nice this loom is to weave on. So the Ashford has these little grooves here and they sit on the end of your table like so or your desk or whatever it is that you're uh, weaving on and I think I was watching uh, Sarah Howard and she was just sitting there talking to us uh, weaving on her rigid huddle and I thought it was it just looked so so nice so I'm in the up position at the moment I have too much yarn here, let me start over. <laughs> Sometimes I have too much, too much yarn off the stick shuttle, which is something I'm learning. I'm learning that you don't want too much. That's the up position. And then you, and I have too much yarn there. Uh, what you want to do is you want to just take your finger here and do a 30 degree angle. I'll change position here. 30 degree angle with your thread. And then you do it a gentle beat. And then you go down to the down position. So let's see. There we go. So now I'm in the down. So you have too much yarn there. And 30 degree angle. And then up. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind my hand spun. Yeah, the the yarn is 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 getting quite worn. So I'll probably superwash wool isn't the greatest this particular brand uh, of superwash. This Cascade. Um, not the best warping job, I'm sure. I was, but again, if you just kind of take things as practice, and nothing's too precious to use. All right, I think what I'm going to do now is I am going to. I'm going to wind. Whoopsie. I'm going to wind this and put this on my loom here. All right, wish me luck uh, getting this through the shuttle. Okay. And I think what I might do is advance the warp a little bit. So get it out of, put it in neutral. Okay, now. He says, she says to put a little piece of paper inside there. This is an old piece of uh, scrapbook paper. It says Halloween stuff on it. <laughs> yes, I dabbled in paper crafts at one point. Where was I here? This is way too thick. This is way too thick. So I put too much, put too much yarn on here for the shed. Try it again. Let's see. See if we can get it through there. <laughs> I 
I just didn't want to, um, I didn't want to cut the yarn because it's, uh, you know, it's art yarn. So, Watch my salvages there. Now that needs to kind of come out, right? The little loops. Yeah, like they have the loop come out. Hmm. There you go. And then up again. <laughs> Put way too much. I like the way it looks though, but yeah, I, I put way too much, um, I put way too much yarn on the, on the shuttle. <laughs> oh my goodness. <sighs> it says here, this isn't the best surface here, but, uh, I don't know, four or five picks, I guess. Yeah, my warp is not holding up very well. That's okay. But I like how it's looking. Let's see? Looks pretty. It matches, actually. So, yeah, then I'll... Um, this is more traditional. I think I'll do a band of this art yarn here and then I'll do some more yellow and then I'll do some of this just kind of in a random way no particular no particular rhyme or reason here no design in mind just uh, having fun <laughs> getting this big old fat shuttle to <laughs> go through the the shed so this is the shed it's this um, this empty space here that you pass your stick through with the yarn on it. Yeah. So when you use art yarn, you got to use a lot less. A lot less. I'm, I'm just using a, um, a stool for the angle, which isn't the best here. I don't have my studio set up here. <laughs> it's fun, though. I'm digging the colors. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep... Um... Oops, sorry. It'll go. I'm just going to do a few more. Uh, just weave a little bit more. I really like it though. It looks pretty. Let's see. Break the... This is a real test of my warp, I tell you. I dig it. It looks pretty.
and then I'll give you an update on my hand spun sweater. Uh, this is my Ar Arboreal jumper by Jennifer Steingas. And the color work was completed last week. Uh oh. The color work was completed last week, and I'm just finishing up. I've separated for the sleeves, and I am finishing the second set of short rows. So Jennifer has you do two sets of short rows uh, right after the yoke. And you go quite far. You go almost into the sleeve cap. And then after you separate for the sleeves, she has you do a few more. So we'll see how that, uh, how that fit is. I've never done that before. And I used, let me make sure my microphone's okay. I used a YouTube tutorial by Chili Dog on how to do the wrap and turn. For years, wrap and turn short rows was a mystery to me. I would read the directions and get utterly confused. Bring the yarn forward, wrap it around, do this, lift up, you know, resolving the wraps. I, I don't think I'm alone in that. I think a lot of people are intimidated by that. But she makes it so easy. I mean, basically you put a collar around the stitch and then the resolving the, the short rows is quite easy. Um, so when you do a short row, you go in uh, one direction, then you turn. And so if you don't do something special at the turn, you're going to get holes in your fabric. So there's different ways. There's a plethora of ways that you can do a, a turn. You know, German short rows, Japanese short rows, Sunday short rows, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this one by Chili Dog, I will link her that video because I've consulted it <laughs> embarrassingly more than once because my retention of things is not what it used to be. So I've got, I'm just resolving the second set of short rows and then I am on to the body. Uh, she has you do some waist shaping. So after I get a significant part of the body done, I'm going to put it on uh, a long, maybe several uh, circular needles, put it on and see if I want to do any shaping. Uh, the other thing is she has you, in the pattern, she has you do ribbing at the cuffs and at the bottom of the sweater, but there's no ribbing here. It's garter at the top. So I think I'm going to just, well, sleeves. When will I get to the sleeves? But when I, when I get to the sleeves, I think I'm going to do a garter cuff around the sleeves and around the bottom. Yeah, I saw somebody did a split hem. I don't know how to do that, but that's, not, that's another option that I'm thinking of. So yeah, I've been enjoying my hand spun project. It's made out of a California variegated mutant CVM uh, in a dark brown and a gray. And I showed the fleece and the yarn in the previous episode. So if I can figure out how to do that little cardy thing, uh, you can click on that and check out what, uh, you know, more about that yarn. All right. So I think that's it. Yes. So Charlie says, Charlie wishes you a very happy, Charlie's our mascot. Charlie is a bear that my son had when he was little, and I have made Charlie a hand-spun sweater. And he sits by my flowers when I buy them, and he wishes you all a very, very happy Mother's Day and a wonderful weekend. So we will see you again next Sunday, and until then, I hope you're well, and I hope whenever you see this and wherever you are in the world that this finds you well. Uh, we'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.
appreciate you keeping me company out here. You want to come inside? Come on, let's go inside. Get up now.